at it. Day two, final reassembly. Uh, listening to Dan Carlin's Hardcore Histories on the, the ear pod. I love these things. Man. Curse my cousin for ever giving me this. Now it never never leaves my ears. Um, got a lot of stuff done yesterday. I got some spark plugs. The spark plug that I was missing. Some spark plug boots and spark plug wires ordered up. Hopefully they'll be here today or tomorrow. Um, and yeah, just got to put stuff back together. Thought I'd do a quick rundown on the car since I haven't really talked about it in a while. You might be looking and be like, what's up with that? So that's, this is a C5 uh, front brake. So it's got this deal with the knuckle attaches to C5 hubs, wheel bearings, and the brake units. So the front has C5 brakes, and that was from CPP. I think it's like California Performance Products or Classic, Classic Performance Products, something like that. Um, we have a 5.3. Uh, mild cam. It's like a 215, 220, something like that. Uh, it's from Summit. Not really uh, a, a monster horsepower maker, but should make some pretty good low end. Uh, the new VS Racing 7875 Turbo will be sitting there. Trailblazer SS intake. And we have ported CNC ported heads with uh, springs. And valves from Modern Airflow Dynamics or MAD. Um, so that's about it there. We got 120 injectors. We have a dual pump system set up where we run two, I think there are 280s or 320s, excuse me. Um, one just runs all the time, the other one kicks on uh, when we see like uh, zero KPA. Uh, or maybe we'll set up as a part of the throttle. I don't know just yet because we haven't quite done the system. Um, it's got Mickey's. There's just these uh, American wheels front and back, 17s up front, and with uh, two 25, 55, 50, 17s on the front. That's to clear the uh, calipers. And on the back, we have a Ford 88 uh, 315 gear, uh, the 31 spline axles uh moroso i think not moroso who made the axles for me dang it i forget who made the axles but one of those companies made the axles um ford mustang gt rear brakes and it made uh 612 horsepower on like 12 psi of boost uh off the old smaller uh ar turbo and it was aluminum uh, 5.3 that we didn't change the oil enough. We ended up contaminating the oil and smoking a rod bearing, so it had to get yanked. And we got this uh, 5.3. It's an iron block, so we're doing it right this time. <laughs> and uh, that's about it. We just went through the iron block, gapped the rings a little bit, uh, dingle ball honed the bores. So we're just putting it all back together, ran on Holly and with the Holly Digital Dash. That'll be about it. So I'm going to get back. I think I'm going to throw the drive shaft up in this thing. All right. So we got this turbo, and you'll see it is a divided T4 flange. And what we have is one of our billet open flanges. I get this question a lot. Like, hey, man, does it, does it, does it make a difference? Does it hurt? Um, and the answer is... Uh, it's probably not a good idea to smash, you know, million degree air into this flat surface. It's going to get super hot and uh, all that heat's going to go into the housing, transfer, you know, to the other side. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, nothing, nothing really good is going to come of it. Nothing terribly bad is going to come of it. Do people do it? Yes, they do it all the time. What am I going to do? Well, I've already sprayed this down with a little uh, markup dye. And I'm just going to take the calibers and I'm just going to make a line in the center here, take out the old die grinder and just work this thing to a nice uh, feather edge. So when the air goes in to whoop, this side and hits the turbo, it'll whoop out to the other sides. Um, I don't know that the uh, twin scroll design is really all that helpful on a big V8 where the pipes are just all coming to one port anyway. So, 
do with that what you will, but I'm gonna take this housing off, uh, scribe that, and then take the die grinder to it and do some whoop, whoop kind of stuff. All right, so you guys saw that. Wow, we were really zoomed in, but let's leave it zoomed in. So this is what we've done. And it's it's a little it's a little thick. What's best to do is kind of round this corner. You don't want it super thin. You don't want knife edge thin so it super heats either. Uh, you want enough mass in it that it can, you know, take the heat as well. But basically I just comb these two together. There was some little nubs down. There was like little nubs in these corners. It was from the casting where they had, uh, you guys see they inserted that. So I just cleaned those out of the corners so get a little better flow. And uh, that will do it. So I'll run this over to the belt sander and just touch it off so it's all nice and flat. And that didn't take uh, maybe a couple minutes. A little, little carbide burr. I got this from Fastenal like years ago and it just keeps running. I don't know. Got lucky with that one. And some edge lube from uh, Tapmatic. Works great to keep the bit from uh, getting too hot and dying. So. Okay, the microphone was dead. So hopefully I didn't lose much. And I replayed with the microphone level so if this is blowing your ears out then I need to know so I can change it back I said it like one click above medium that's a note for yourself Mike yeah look at this Amazon delivered we got our spark plugs and our little uh, what do you call these heat wrappy boys and there they, I got the apparently I, I had the wrong spark plug wires these fit a lot better so those the ones we're kind of pulling these guys fit a little looser so I uh, was buying 2005 now I got the 2004 and they were different so yay so those guys these guys are done too except we're waiting on that one spark plug I've ordered them right from NGK <laughs> it's a sad fact we got the turbo it's hung by the manifold with care oil filter all other things clamped down this guy cost me all kinds of grief the uh if you remember the uh, little oil, not oil, the water overflow tank, it was pointing right, so it literally came down and it almost touched the turbo. So what I did is I stuck a tube in it and I heated it up. You can't really see it, maybe right through here. Yeah, and just bent it back and around and then I moved it back because it was sitting forward with about an inch and a half. So it was coming right there. So I moved, I drilled another hole, put this back, and now it sits back there. We got a turbo blanket showing up for this guy. Hopefully that'll work. If not, then we'll just make an overflow tank. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but I don't really feel like making custom one-off everything. <laughs> yeah, so all that's together. This took a lot more time than I anticipated. Everything's taking more time when you're bolting it back together for the last time. Make sure the gaskets and the sills are all good and everything is bolted down the way it should be. Fitting nice and snug. So yeah. And then I have to stop. Like once I get done with something, I, you know, I go to put something else on, I have to stop and think like, hey, is that really the thing that needs to go on next? Or is that going to inhibit you from putting something else on? So just trying to take your time, do it right. Final assembly. 
Thanks for dropping in and checking out the episode. As always, it's very much appreciated. I was putting this together and I thought like, hey, why don't we just sell this as a turbo starter kit? I know build season's coming up and people are going to need turbos and flanges. So I got a hold of Berin over at VS Racing and uh, worked out a deal. So if you buy one of the new uh, VS Racing turbos, the link will be down there in the description. Then I'll throw in a flange. Uh, you just go right on my site and order those. And you can pick whether you want a two and a half uh, inch flange or a three inch flange. Uh, the built guys that are up there that I used as well. And I think it's a pretty good deal. Uh, I know other people sell Varin's turbos for like cheaper than advertised, uh, which is another option. If you want to work through those ways, again, it'll work great with this flange. And I don't care if you buy a turbo from Varin or one of his distributors or myself. Uh, but these flanges do go well with these, and I hope you consider it. The flanges themselves, I think, are $115 and maybe some change on the website. And the kit itself, uh, I think it's like $240, $250, something like that. But it'll, it'll, the link will be below, and you can just click on that. And we got plenty in stock, so buy today, ship today, or ship, you know, same or next business day. And yeah, until next time, we appreciate you guys dropping in. Check out the channel. This is Mike Monkey Fans signing out.